good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord tonight, my family. <laughs> and I'm not sure I have enough imagination to see the rest of y'all. But uh, I tell you what, it's encouraging just knowing that you've logged on and are listening. And I want you to know we are praying for Greg and, and Barrett. Uh, got a new granddaughter. And, uh, or Barrett's got a new daughter. Her great granddaughter. And yeah, Sister Craig's great granddaughter. Pray for all those that are struggling with sickness. Sister Jackie, uh, Sister Smith, the, the Gregory family. Pray for them. Pray for, continue to pray for my wife's sister, Deanne's daughter, and her baby, uh, Jesse. Uh, Jesse's went in the hospital with COVID-19 and just really needs God's touch. And pray for Joanne. Hold her up in prayer. God, just keep her and the family safe as well. Amen. And uh, uh, Sister Janie requested prayer for her and her family and everything. Pray for Mary that had surgery, that God will touch her and minister to her and her son and Angel and just uh, for Jason, uh, just a lot of needs. Brad and Christy, they've self-quarantined. They were with somebody last week that that uh, tested positive on Monday or Tuesday and somebody from their church, so pray for them and uh, they'll find out probably tomorrow whether they've got it or not, but her and Brad are not feeling well. Pray that God will give people wisdom, but most of all that God will give all of us a closer walk with him, right. Right. that we'll see our need for a closer walk with the Lord. Amen. And uh, that's that's about the only way that everybody can win, Amen. is that the ones that are affected in any way will draw near to the Lord. Amen. 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 If you want to stand in your, uh, wherever you're watching, in the living rooms, or dining rooms, or wherever, let's go to the Lord in prayer. If, you, if you've got a special need... If you just raise your hand tonight and let it be known, God sees the hand, God sees the need. Amen. And let's believe the Lord that he'll intervene. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight, and we just praise you and thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the church world. I thank you, God, for the fellowship of the brothers and sisters in you, Lord. Oh, God, how lonely it is without one another, God. To hug, God, to shake hands.
morning mood. Thankful as Christians, we don't have to be moved by things people say. Right. Media puts something out. Yeah. It can bother us or it cannot. But if we have the hope of Jesus, yes, sir. it doesn't have to bother us. It doesn't right. have to freak right. out. We don't have to have the same reaction that the world has yes. to life's to life circumstances. That we as Christians can go through life and as a tree planted by the waters, we can go through life not being moved. Yes, amen. amen. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Lakered in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. In this love of bodies, I shall not be moved. In the confining, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters.
sending it in. We'll get it in when you can. And um, amen. Kaylee, testify. Well, I love the Lord, and I thank Him for everything He's doing. And I'm thankful that through all of this craziness, we still have a God that is here, and He doesn't change. And yes, amen. when everything's falling apart, if we draw nigh to Him, He promises that He will draw nigh to us. And I just love Him tonight. Amen. Chase, testify. I thank the Lord that it doesn't matter what it, it feels like we're going through, what it feels like is just coming in on every side and all surrounded, that God is with us and he'll carry us through it. Whatever he whatever He brings our way, he will give us the grace to go through it and bring us through it. I love you tonight. Amen. We need to really, 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 when we say practice the Lord's presence, uh, sometimes it's more of a faith walk than it is at other times. And sometimes we cry out to him and it seems like he just instantly comes on the scene and intervenes. Those of you that want to be turning in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. Amen. Uh, he's faithful. Amen. You know, if you'll walk with him day by day and you will talk to him and seek to listen to him and draw near to him, you'll find that he is a present help in trouble and he'll be there to meet your need. Amen. When that need arises. And, uh, you know, we don't serve God uh, as we get on in the Lord and mature in the Lord. We don't serve God just from insurance policy. Right. You know, when we when I when we when I first came to the Lord, that's all it was. I was looking for a fire escape. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought I loved the Lord, but I liked Charlie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I liked me. Yeah, right. And yeah. I didn't really uh, care that much, or was that much, not that much concerned about him and what he had gone through. Right. For me, that I might have life. I just didn't want to perish and go to a devil's hell. Yes. And I praise God for that here, that fear. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was a very healthy fear for mm -hmm. me because it drew me nearer to God right. yes. and made me start seeking Him yes. and endeavoring to draw near to Him. And I tell you what, if you'll do that, uh, he, you'll find Him. Amen. You will find Him. He's faithful. Amen? Amen. And I tell you what, I could call names. I've had so many that's been on my heart just since we started service tonight. Uh, I mean, I've uh, had the Thomases and the Gregories and the Smiths and uh, Rhonda Burns and and uh, just uh, just so many, Amen, Brother Lynn. Just so many people that I haven't seen in a long time. But I tell you what, God's touched with your need. Yes, yes and, that's right. Uh, you may have more needs than you're even aware of. Yes. But if you'll come as you are, just as I am, to the Lord. He will be there and he will meet you. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Begin reading in verse 17. I don't know why I skipped verse 19, but I got uh, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. Verse 21 says, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Right. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. You see the circumstance. You see the home, the, the family, the environment, the predicament that each one may be in. And I pray, God, that you would be a friend that sticks closer, Lord, than we ever dreamed possible or imaginable to each one. Touch the people that we know and God have not really been feeling that much concern about. I pray, God, that you would help us to be a better Christian and be more fervent and faithful than we have before. I pray, God, that you accomplish your will in this service tonight, in each of our hearts, that we'll draw near to you, give us strength. And we thank you for all you've done and are doing in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Pray without ceasing. 
in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, pray without ceasing. We have we understand that. We need to always, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Uh, in everything give thanks. Now that's a different story. That can be difficult at times. Uh, somebody you love being murdered, somebody you love and care about, uh, you know, being ill-treated and, and bad coming their way. We don't understand that. But the Bible is very clear to tell us regardless of the circumstances yep. that we get in, God is to be praised. He's worthy. Amen. And he's, he's deserving of our praise and our right. thanksgiving. Right. And we can trust him, giving thanks to him, because he does all things well. Amen. My, now, my cousin, my first cousin, was uh, on a tractor, riding on a tractor, and, and uh, uh, fell off and, and got his leg cut off four inches below his knee. And that was, that was a binding together of our family. I'll never forget the way my mother cried and cried and cried and cried. And to us, it's like it, it didn't sink in. It didn't sink in. Mm -hmm. But the first time we saw him, it was alive and it was real. Yeah. And us kids, it really sunk in more than it had. Right. We didn't know anything about the phantom pain of his, of his foot hurting or itching and him going to scratch it and the foot wasn't there called phantom pain. We didn't know anything about that, but God is faithful. But I want to talk to you tonight on something that you can do to help this situation. Amen. You can do one thing that will help regardless of what you're going through. You can pray. You can pray. And you can pray for sanctification in your own life. Amen. Sanctification is the supreme end of all Christians. Amen. We need to be seeking God right. first. We're saved. We're regenerated. Amen. We used to testify all the time as kids. It was big in the church of God, in the assembly of God, in the Pentecostal church of God. I thank God I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And most of the kids that stood up and began to testify that way, they sure didn't act saved. They didn't act like they were sanctified and they sure didn't act like they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But many of them today are preaching the gospel. Many of them today are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, brother. But at first, it was an act. It was something that they really didn't understand. Yeah, sometimes, I... when we begin to do things in the Lord, we may not understand why God is leading us in that direction. Yeah. We may not, under not understand why God is wanting us to do that or to act that way. But if we'll be faithful, God will take care of us. Everything should be happening to draw us nearer to the Lord with the grand theme of hearing God say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And us having something to present to him when we get there. We don't want to just get there and be a last-minute Christian. Thank God for the God that was on the cross that said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And yes. God told him, This day will you be with me in paradise. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. Right. Thank God for that deathbed experience. For that foxhole experience, yeah. thank God, when we cry out to the Lord in our hour of great need. But, brother, we've got opportunity. We've got a life to live before a lost and dying world right. tonight. That's and if that's we'll true. do it God's way instead of doing it our way, then God will be using us to bring glory to himself. That's right. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that glory for him is within our reach. But for it to be within our reach, we've got to serve him his way, not serve him our way. Right. Amen. Sanctification is, is radical. Sanctification is us dying to ourself, to our mind, will, and emotions, and being separated from evil, separated from all the things that would blaspheme God or, or draw us away or apart from God. All those things that would cause us to, to dispel or despise God's holiness and God's righteousness. God wants us to be in one in fellowship and communion with him. He, if you are, are detested by holy, something holy about God, you need to question your salvation and your walk with God. You need to realize, amen, that the, his name is holy. His actions are holy. Everything that he does is just and good and holy. And he's not doing anything just to transform us to where, to where we'll just be an odd, odd creature to a lost world. He don't want us to just be odd and different and peculiar that way. But 
That's, That's right. right. We're aliens, as it were. Yeah. The world many times calls us despicable. Mm -hmm. I want you to know this generation, the Bible says, shall not pass until he comes to get the church. What generation? The generation that's alive when Israel become a nation. In 1948, I believe, Israel become a nation. A nation was born in a day. If I understand it right, Brother Persinger, my dad, his mother was a backslidden Church of God preacher. You know, there's not very many women preachers that really have the goods, especially in old timers. I mean, many, I've heard many people talk about they just don't like women preachers and they don't like this and don't like that. I've right. got one woman preacher that I listen to fairly regularly, probably as regularly as I listen to anybody else. Why? It's Sharon Knotts. She calls. I used to listen to her when she would come on KCBI, and it just ministered to me. It seemed like oftentimes her messages were so timely. But did you know uh, there was a great, great group, probably a third of the radio stations that she was on canceled her, and they canceled her for one reason, because she was a woman preacher. Now, whether that's jealousy, whether that's insecurity, whether that's their belief, and they believe that way, I don't know. But, uh, and I'm not falling out with them or finding fault and hadn't thought of this in weeks or months, so I don't know why I'm bringing it up tonight. But I want you to know, you, you better get to the place as a Christian that you can tell who's being used of God to help you get to heaven yes. and help you take somebody with you. And you better not let, just cause you don't like the looks of the curls of their hair, just cause you don't like the looks of, of, of this or that about them, don't be hindered by that. Right. Beg God for a discernment of the Holy Ghost that can help you to figure out whether they're sanctified or not. Because if they're sanctified, they're going to be living a life that's pleasing to the Lord. And they're going to be used of God and they're going to be a blessing. Right. Man. They can be saying all kinds of fancy things and deep things and this, that, and the other and not have an ounce of the anointing of God in them. You need to be able to tell the difference. Right. You need to be able to tell who is and who isn't walking with God. Amen. If you're walking with God, there's going to be a moral transformation in your thinking and in your acting. God's going to regenerate your heart. You're going to like things you didn't used to like. Yeah. You're going to detest things you didn't used to detest. Right. Amen. God is advancing you on and on and on to what? To more like what He is and what He likes. This word for sanctify is used and found six times in the New Testament. Amen. And it basically means to make pure and holy. That's what it means in a nutshell. To make holy. Amen. Sanctification is a complete work. God begins to sanctify your life. He begins to sanctify your thoughts. He begins to uh, sanctify your outward appearance. He begins to make you look less like the world and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to know you're never more any heaven ready than you were the instant you surrendered your heart, life to the Lord, and said, God, just as I am, That's take right. me, God, and you do whatever you want to do with me, Lord. That's right. right. Have your way in my life. Amen. At that moment, God began to take and make a new you. He began to give you a new body, a new yeah. soul, and a new spirit. Amen. He begins to change. Amen. And cause you to be affected in a different way than you would before. Some people could do something to you now. And used to, you may want to cuss them out or may want to hit them. And now you just shake your head and say, God, have mercy on them. Brother, I'm talking about God's making a new man out of you if you'll let him. And if you're not being If you're talking and confiding in the one that made it all, 
He'll be able to give you the answers that will give you peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, for he trusteth in thee. Isaiah 26 and 3. Amen. The man that tests it all is going to test it all by that blessed book, the Holy Bible. Amen. God wants to change your affections, your appetites, your passions. Amen. He wants to change and give you a new heart. He wants you to give you a heart of compassion instead of a heart that wants to defend itself and a heart that wants to always come out on top. Brother, God wants to give you a heart of love. God wants to hide the Word of God in our heart and change our nature and our being to where it's not just we that we care about, but it's others. Amen. It's others. Amen. God cares about the physical. But God says bodily exercise profit, profits little. But brother, I'm telling you, there's an exercise that's hard. I've talked to a lot of people in the last week or so. I've had some of the men that I admire most in this life. I'm talking about five, six, seven of them having a hard time touching God. Mm -hmm. Having a hard time. Normally they get down to pray and they can just pray things, things through and feel the glory of God and feel the presence of God and everything's great. What do they do without exception? I've not talked to one that said anything different. You've got to pray it through. You've got to yeah, press on me. Right. You've got to crucify the flesh. You've got to put forth more strength, brother. If the hacks are the whole dull, hey, Stay there a little longer, brother. When you yeah, get up, yeah. if you have to get up, go to the bathroom. Come back and spend some time with God again. Yeah, and then right. do it again if necessary. Yeah. What's going to happen eventually? He's going to visit you. And yeah, he's going right. to come by. Amen. That's right. And he's going to acknowledge that his presence is near. But brother, just because you don't feel his presence, don't you let the devil tell you that he's forsaken you or he's let go of you. He'll never let go of you. He promised never forsake us. Never to leave us. Amen. He's not going to leave us and hang us out to dry. Yeah, Brother, yeah. the word, the nature of man is trying to draw the nature of man more into the nature of God. The word of God is trying to let your spirit be more like God's spirit. To let you be loving him for what he is. Whether it cost you or it cost somebody else, you need to realize it wasn't free. Hey, we talk about our proud, arrogant country. I thank God for the good things that's happening in America. I thank God for the leadership of our president. I thank God, but I'm telling you something that is weighing heavy on my heart. That's the confidence and the arrogance that I seem to have. And seeing the leadership and in the church, it's people, brother, that feel a little bit like they can handle it without God. And brother, I want you to know, He's the God that holds our very breath. That's right. Amen. We need to look to Him. We need to cry out to Him. We need to realize He's the one that can preserve us and keep us blameless yes. before the world. There's a lot of us, brother, I, I think I walk fairly well. But whenever I get to thinking like I walk fairly well, I'm comparing myself to you or you or you or you or some of you out there in media land. But I want you to know something, brother. We better be comparing ourselves to the Word of God. That's, That's right. right. And we don't need to be comparing ourselves to the Word of God by the letter. Mm -hmm. The letter can justify. Yeah. You can find a letter. You can find a word in Scripture for about anything you want to believe. There's people think they got scriptural grounds for smoking dope. There's people think they got scriptural grounds for committing adultery. There's people, brother, I'm telling you what. If you get in the word of God and God begins to deal with you about something you're doing, some mistake you've made in the past, you better get a hold of God and figure out what do you want to do with this situation now? God, what do I do now? How do I get out of this mess I've got That's myself right. in? And the same Holy Ghost that convicted your heart will show you what to do and what he, his desire for your life is. But you better be taking it to him. You can't just take it for granted that he's just a good old Joe and yeah. he's going to let it slide because he's not good. He's not much at letting stuff slide. Brother, it better go under the blood Amen. or we're in trouble. That's right. It's the power of God that leads us to salvation. It's the power of God that leads us from, from wicked, adulterous men to holy men. It's the power of God that gets us out of the circumstances that we're in. It's the power of God that leads you to stay there and tear it till you be a new with power. Brother, it's the power of God that will make you pray that prayer again. You 
prayed it ten times that day. Hey, you've already quoted the Lord's Prayer. You've already quoted the Ten Commandments. You've already done what normally works, but now it seems like you're finding a hard time for it to work. Keep doing it. Yeah. Keep on Amen. pressing in. Amen. Keep right. on keeping on for God. Yes. The feelings will come. But brother, the feelings is not what we're after. It's faithfulness to God and pleasing Him. That's right. That's what we're after. We're wanting Him to do a divine work in our heart and life. We're wanting Him to make us to be faithful. We're wanting Him to help us. Amen. To cry aloud to Him and realize He's our only hope and our only help. He's the omnipotent one. He's the all-powerful one. He's the omniscient one. Right. Amen. He can do it all. He can see it all. Amen. He can change it all. Amen. But brother, I'm telling you, way the only way he can change it is if you let him change it his way. Yes. The only way he can take our old black heart and wash him and make him whiter than snow is if it passes through the blood of Christ. Amen. But pride, self-conceit will make us think we'll be all right. We can get through this test. We can get through this storm. We've, we've, we've fought battles before. Jesus, help us. God's after entire and complete sanctification in your life. Amen. He wants you to be yielded to Him. He's sick and tired of a church that's doing it their way. He don't want us to do it our way. Mm -hmm. He right. wants us to do it His way. That's right. Amen. And when we'll do it His way, according to His good pleasure, for His glory... We'll begin to see the manifested power of God in the church like we haven't been seeing it yes, in the amen. last few years. Yeah. Yeah. Why, brother? Just a different day and hour. Brother, the, the rains had come and gone. When I evangelized, it was on my card. Ask you if the Lord rain in the times of the letter rain. And I talked to preacher after preacher after preacher. And they about got me to the place, brother, that I was convinced that the rain just not falling like it used to. And brother, I want you to know I believe it's not falling like it used to in many and most spots in America. Brother, but I'm telling you what, there's mercy drops, Come there's on. showers, right. there's still right. hailstones, yes. God can use the right. right. of God's people. But That's brother, right. we've got to live serving and pleasing and acknowledging Him and giving Him That's praise. That's right. Amen. Amen. Full of peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's the Spirit of God that gives you peace in your walk with Him. You're not going to have peace with mankind until you learn how to have peace with Almighty God. Yes. Right. Amen. But when it is well with your soul, when you can hear Him in your spirit, acknowledge that He loves you and He cares and He's there. Right. Amen. It'll give you strength. Sanctification in your heart and life comes not through a lofty Pride. Brother, sanctification and a heart that's truly right with God comes with a heart of utility. I can't remember. Maybe it was Sister Angela in our church that told about she did a, a research on prayer. And I'm sure I did a lot of studying on prayer in the past. But she talked about it most of the places. Maybe it was her or Brother Cook. I don't remember. Anyway, whoever it was, they talked about how that when they studied prayer, prayer most of the time in Scripture, it was talking about to prostrate oneself, to lie head down, brother, to get your face in the dirt, so to speak. Yeah. Hey, to get down there at a low place and love yeah. the Lord and cry out to the Lord and be still before the Lord right. and let God have a say. That's right. God don't want us to just give a bunch of fancy words, highfalutin words, and then get up and go on our merry way. Brother, but I'm telling you, God's wanting to teach you and me a thing or two. And what he's wanting to teach us is him. That's right. It's about him. It's for him. Amen. He's what's important in our life. I was thinking this morning. I was praying and I got to thinking and I probably thought more than I've ever really thought about. You know, in the wedding, we all think we're the bride of Christ. Mm. But if we're all going to be the bride of Christ, who's going to be the guest? If we think we're all that, why did he cast the one out that didn't have on the wedding garment? I'm talking about, brother, God is a precious, powerful, holy, and just God. Amen. 
He's a God that's going to examine us in a way we've never been examined before. He who created the cells that make up our body. Brother, he knows the good and the bad. He knows the indifferent. He knows more than just the bad attitude when he sees it. He knows the bad attitude when it's germinating. He knows what we were watching and listening to and who we were rubbing elbows with that entertained that bad attitude and fertilized that bad attitude and made us to justify this or that wrong mm -hmm. and that sin in our life. Why do we pray? Pastor, we pray because as we pray, the Holy Ghost brings that to light mm -hmm. and he lets all the dross float away, brother. It's repented of. It's, it's acknowledged. And oh God, have mercy on me. But we go along and we think well, we can let people slide. And it's not a convenient season. We think it's all on their part. They told Paul, Paul, much learning doth make thee mad. Go away when it's a convenient season and a convenient time. I'll call for you. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It wasn't a convenient season or time when Jesus made a, a coarse scourge and began to drive the money changers out of the temple. It wasn't a convenient season, but it was necessary. Why? Right. Because he must keep his house holy and pure. That's right. Amen. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. prayer. Yes. But if we're not careful, we'll make it a den of thieves. God encourages us to seek him with a heart that's faithful, an expression of true and devoted love and concern about others, not just ourselves, but others. 1 Thessalonians 5.3. Amen. We see here, or I'm sorry, 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's God saying to us? He's saying all of us, our body, our soul, our spirit, our intellect, our mind, our emotions, our will, our desires, what we have craved, what we have lusted after before. Brother, we need to realize the flesh lusteth against the spirit. What the flesh wants to do is satisfy the flesh. Let me play another game. Let me have another moment of entertainment. Let me be idle on a couch and be a potato there. Let me do this and let me do that because it pleases me. Samson said, get her for me because she pleases me. Jesus That's right. But I'm going to tell you what. She cost him dearly. Mm -hmm. She cost him his eyes. She cost him very great judgment that came his way. Amen. Yes. And I don't believe his ministry was ever what it could have been because of what his eyes craved and lusted after and what his heart wanted yeah. that he put before God. God preserves us, but he wants us to draw near to him. He don't preserve us in our blanket life of just living any old way we please. The Son of God came to die and give his all that you and I might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Amen. The Holy Ghost is there to keep us, to remind us. I mean, brother, to let us know that our aim and our desire is to please God and to allow God to change us. Amen. Isaiah 59 and 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is he ear heavy that he cannot hear. He said, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Listen to this. He's talking to me as well as he's talking to you. Listen yeah. to what he's saying. Seek God, fear God, yeah. covet earnestly what God has yeah. for you. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Amen. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue has muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and they speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. I'm talking about ring on down. They hatch cockroaches' eggs and they weave spider's web. 
Amen. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. I'm telling you, we better be speedily running into the word of God that we might hear what thus saith the Lord pertaining to me yes. and to you. I come to God that my God may give me a word for you. But I want you to know I come to God that God may examine me and yeah. show me any spots or blemishes that's in my garment. Anything in me that's not pleasing to him. Amen. What's he saying there? The very God of peace sanctify you holy completely. That word means to be made absolutely perfect. To be made exactly what the heartbeat of God is. For you right. what God wants to do. He's wanting to lead you to everything he can lead you into that will make you and I more like him. Come on. Amen. Matthew 5 and 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. What's he saying? He's talking about our enemies here. Love your enemies. These that are odious. These that look at us, brother, with such hate. As I was telling you a little bit earlier, they call us, what was it, despicable ones. It's the Christians. I'm not saying get paranoid. I'm not saying hate the devil's crowd. God's word saying love the devil's crowd. That's right. But if you think it's going to be easy, and you're going to be able to just love the devil's crowd, live it any old way you like. I'm telling you, one of them's going to slap you upside your cheek at the wrong time. That's right. And you're going to draw back and want to go to blows with them. That's the flesh. Yes, amen. God said, crucify the flesh. Amen. Amen. Those that look at you with hatred, and they would annihilate you if they could. If you look this word out in the, in the Greek here, this, this word, ekthros, in the commentary that's used eastward, it's talking about Satan, the very enemy of the church, him and his emissaries. Yeah. Brother, I'm telling you, they're not hardly in agreement on anything but killing me and you. Mm -hmm. They're in agreement at destroying us. Why? Because we are dear to the heart of God. We're the That's apple right. of God's eye. Amen. He loves us, brother. We've been engrafted in. We need to pray for the safety of Jerusalem. We need to have a burden for those Jews, those Israelites that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, unless they come to God now, it's going to be a point to where it's going to cost them dearly to see him and find him. God tells us not just love them, but bless them. Amen. Give them a good blessing and benediction as it were. Let the final word from us be a word of blessing to them. Not a word of cussing or getting even. Amen. Amen. Love them that persecute you and despitefully use you, those that hate you. Bless them. That word curse there is the word that means katara. It means to execrate. It means to feel or express great loathing for. They were execrated. As dangerous and corrupt. Do you realize that's the way the devil feels about you and I? We are a threat to his domain. That's right. He has stolen as much of our kingdom and domain as he could get away with. And God's trying to get us to live in a way. Thank God. Thank God for hearts being hungry. Amen. Thank God for God wanting us to be hungry for more of him. To see what God may be talking us about. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Yes. Amen. Persecute you. Yes. To pursue you literally to annihilate you. To ensue and follow you with such vengeance as to persecute and utterly destroy. What are we to do? We're to pray for them. Amen. Pray for them, which despitefully use you. You see anybody, you know anybody that the only time they say anything good about you is when they can use it as a rung on the ladder to step up higher themselves? Yeah. You almost
almost know when they come to shake your hand, brother, they got a dagger in the other hand. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate end in their heart is your back mm -hmm. or in under your rib cage. Mm -hmm. God says not just love them, not just bless them, but pray for them. I believe he says for us to pray for them in a way there that that he may know that we need to get some things right in our own heart before we're able to fulfill all of those desires and those commands of the Holy Red. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and persecute you. Or pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. 